In the last video, we saw how to construct a decision tree classifier. And the idea is to choose a feature, split on that feature, split again at each of the new nodes, and keep repeating this all the way down until reaching some sort of a stopping condition. This stopping condition could be the maximum allowed tree height, but it could also be some other hyperparameter too, such as the maximum number of splits. And so then the question is, how do you decide which feature to split on? Well, the answer is that you choose the feature that optimizes the gain metric. Now, in the example that we've been looking at, all our variables have been categorical. For example, energy levels were either low, medium, or high. Weather was either fair or poor. And Alice either did or did not go for a run. Nothing in between. But what happens in your data set when there are now continuous variables as well? Well, there are two different types of variables that could become continuous. It could be either the features, which are also known as the independent variables, or else it could be the target variable, which is also known as the dependent variable. And so you could have a case where only the features are continuous, or else you could have a case where only the target variable is continuous, or else you could have a case where they both go continuous, or else where neither of them are continuous, which is the example we've already looked at. And in fact, you could even have a case where some of the features are continuous, whereas some of them are categorical. And so we need to understand how decision trees handle each of these scenarios. So let's first consider the scenario where the features are continuous. In this case, a common method is to allocate the values to quantiles. So for example, let's look at this variable here. Uh, we can find the quantiles of this variable by sorting the values from smallest to largest and then partitioning them. And then we can try splitting at each of these quantile boundaries. So during training, as usual, the algorithm will attempt to split on every feature and choose the one that gives the best gain. But if one or more of the features are continuous, it will try splitting on every quantile of these continuous features. And so that means it needs to try more potential splits. Now, this raises a question. How many quantiles should we be trying? Well, that's more of an implementation issue. Different algorithms do it in different ways. A common one is to do four quantiles, but some algorithms do 10 quantiles as well. And some algorithms even try every single value. Obviously, attempting more quantiles means that the algorithm needs more computational resources during the training phase. But in return, it usually offers better granularity and hence better performance. Okay, so that's how the decision tree handles continuous features. Now, how about continuous target variables? Well, when the target variable becomes continuous, we now have a tree regressor instead of a tree classifier. So for example, instead of trying to predict whether or not Alice goes for a run, it would be like trying to predict the duration over which Alice went for a run. And so it would be some sort of a positive real number. In such a case, the objective function that's used is the mean squared error, also known as MSE. Here's how it's defined. And what's y hat here? Well, let's go back to the case of a classifier. Over there, we were talking in terms of probability p, which was just the fractional occurrence of a certain class at a given node. So p was just the average of the y's within a certain node, where these y variables happen to be binary, because it was a classifier problem. And so in the case of a regressor, y hat is just going to be the average of the y's within a certain node. And so what we can now do is replace y hat with the mean of y within a leaf node, which we'll just call y bar. But this is now just a definition of variance. 
And so the MSE just reduces down to the variance when the predicted Y is equal to the average Y, meaning that Y hat is equal to Y bar. It's for this reason that minimizing the MSE in tree regression is often called variance reduction. All you're trying to do is split your data set into subsets so that in each of those subsets, the target variables are as close to each other as possible. And this point is really important. The tree is partitioning the data set so that points which have similar values in the target variable are being grouped together. So let's summarize what we've seen. There are two different cases where variables can go continuous. If a feature variable is continuous, you can just find the n quantiles of the variable and try splitting on each of those quantiles, choosing the best choice. On the other hand, if the target variable is continuous, you can change your splitting criterion to something like MSE instead of entropy. And we've seen that that's equivalent to variance reduction. Or else, alternatively, we could use a different splitting criterion like MAE, which stands for mean absolute error. And that's not too different from MSE, as you can see from the equation. And so now that we've looked at some of the nuts and bolts of decision trees, in the next video, we're going to be taking a step back to look at the pros and cons of trees, and then try and see why tree ensemble methods are a good idea.